Hola, hola, hola. ¿Cómo están? Gracias por estar conmigo otra vez. Today, el día de hoy, vamos a ir a la playa. Vamos a la playa. Hay una playa en el centro. In the center. En el centro de la ciudad. La playa se llama La Barceloneta. The beach calls itself La Barceloneta. La playa se llama La Barceloneta. I'm currently walking along this lovely promenade that runs parallel to the beach. Beach promenades are very common in Spain. They are called, se llaman, Paseos Marítimos. Estoy caminando por el Paseo Marítimo. This literally translates to Maritime Promenade. Paseo can also be translated as a walk, stroll, or outing. To remember this, try to think of people passing you by as they go on their stroll. Un paseo. Maritime and marítimo are pretty much spelt exactly the same, but we change the last letter from an E in maritime to an O. Maritime, marítimo. We also have an accent on the first I of marítimo. When you see a dash mark above a letter in Spanish, that means we stress that letter. It's not marítimo, it's marítimo. Anyway, to my right, I can see golden sand. Arena dorada. The Mediterranean is looking as inviting as ever. It's catching my attention. Me llama la atención. El mar Mediterráneo me llama la atención. Me. Me. Llama. It calls. La. The. Atención. Attention. It calls my attention. Me llama la atención. I'm going to peel off from the promenade and get closer to the sea. Because, as I say, me llama la atención. Vamos a la playa. Oh, the sand isn't just golden. La arena no es solo dorada. It's also very hot. La arena está muy caliente. Have you heard the word caliente before? It means hot or warm, depending on the context. We use it to describe things that are heated or have a high temperature. Like sand heated by the sun. Now, why do you think we say la arena, the sand, está caliente? Why don't we say, la arena es caliente? Why is it that we use está instead of es? Well, está comes from the verb estar. And in Spanish, we use estar to describe temporary states. Estar means to be. The current temperature of the sand, that is a temporary state. It won't be very warm tonight when the sun retreats. On the other hand, es, like estar, also means it is. It's a conjugation of the verb ser. Ser. S-E-R. Ser is used when describing permanent or inherent qualities, which don't apply to the sand's temperature because, well, that can change. So, if you were to say to me, la arena es caliente, I might think, hmm, why is the sand always so hot? Come night or day, winter or summer. However, notice how earlier I did say, la arena, the sand, es dorada. I used the verb ser instead of estar, and that's because I'm referring to a more permanent characteristic of the sand. It's color. Anyhow, 
In English, we don't make this distinction. We use to be for both permanent and temporary situations. But now that you know there is that distinction in Spanish, your new Spanish ears will start to detect when they hear the verb ser and estar. Your brain will start extracting meaning from the two in ways that you'd never do in English. Anyway, let's get closer to the waves. I find they help relax my mind. So, this beach, La Barceloneta, due to its central location, can get very busy. But today, it's actually not too crowded. To say the word crowded or full in Spanish, you would say llena. Llena. That's L-L-E-N-A. Two L's in Spanish are pronounced as a Y sound. Y. Yeah. Or a SH sound. Or even a J sound. They are all perfectly acceptable ways of pronouncing the double L. I sometimes say ya, lleno, or llena. The people in Barcelona would say lleno, or llena. In a place like Argentina, they would say lleno, or llena. Which one do you like? Lleno, lleno, or lleno. So, in Spanish, to say today, we would say hoy. It's pronounced just like how when us Brits try to grab someone's attention by saying oi, oi mate, oi. Oi is today. So, I have another question for you. In Spanish, how would you say today the beach is not busy? Hoy la playa no está llena. Hoy. La playa no está llena. Now, why is it not hoy la playa no es llena? Well, we use está and not es because we are describing the beach's current state. It's temporarily not busy, but maybe later it will be. Now, you could say la playa no es llena, no es llena. But then I would be thinking to myself, hmm, interesting. The beach is inherently or generally a quiet one. Maybe it's closed off to people or it's dangerous. And that's because when you say no es llena, you're describing a permanent or inherent characteristic about the beach. Can you hear the waves? We're getting close. I'm very content right now. In Spanish, to say the word happy or content, you can say contento. Contento. Simply add an O to the word content. Contento. If you are a woman, you would describe yourself instead as contenta. Simply add an A to the word content. Now, there are two ways to say I am in Spanish. There's soy, which comes from the verb ser. Soy. It's pronounced and spelt just like soy from soybeans. The second way we can say I am in Spanish is by saying estoy. Estoy. And this comes from the verb estar. Estoy. Now, how would you say in Spanish, today I am happy? If you're a man, then you would say, hoy estoy contento. Hoy estoy contento. If you're a woman, then you would say, hoy estoy contenta. Hoy estoy contenta. You can also say, hoy estoy feliz. Hoy estoy feliz. Now, if all this makes sense to you, then a big congratulations is in order. 
you are understanding a fundamental aspect of the Spanish language. You are showing the ability to distinguish between ser and estar. You can say soy feliz or soy contento, but when a Spanish speaker hears that, they will interpret it as a more enduring state that you're referring to. You know how some people are known for being happy? Their happiness is an enduring state that we would use to describe them. Like part of their temperament. If you're like that, then you could say, Soy feliz. Or, Soy contento. But generally, emotions fluctuate. They tend to be temporary. We use the verb estar to reflect this. Hoy Estoy feliz. Hoy estoy feliz porque estoy en la playa. Now, the word for person in Spanish is persona. Persona. We simply add an A at the end of person. Una persona. It doesn't matter if the person is a woman or a man we would still refer to them as una persona because persona is a feminine noun. To say always in Spanish, you say siempre. Siempre. Say it with me. Siempre. With that being said, how would you say I am always a happy person? I'll give you a clue. You would say it in the following order in English. Always, I am a person happy. Siempre soy una persona feliz. You get that? Siempre soy una persona feliz. You could also say, Siempre soy una persona contenta. I told you earlier, the word for content or happy is contento. However, if the noun is feminine, then we change the last letter in contento from an O to an A. Una chica contenta. Or un chico contento, for example. Also, remember, we say siempre soy in this case and not estoy because we are describing a more permanent characteristic about ourselves. Remember, we are saying siempre, I'm always happy. Siempre soy feliz. You're getting the hang of this, aren't you? Oh, I'm in the way of these boys playing with their football. Let me, let me quickly just, there we go, out the way. Now, these boys playing football, as you can hear, they're very happy. I don't know whether they're always or generally happy, but based on their smiles and laughter, I know that in this moment, they are happy. In Spanish, there are two ways to say they are. Son and están. Son, like song without the G. And están. Think of the nickname Stan for Stanley. Now add an E in front. Están. Both of these words mean they are. Right now, these boys are very happy. In Spanish, how would you say they are very content? Están muy contentos. Están muy contentos. Now, you may have said, están contento, which is almost correct. But because there are multiple people being content, we add an S to the end of contento to show this. Contentos. If there were multiple women or feminine nouns being content, we would say, contentas. Están contentas. So, to say in Spanish, the boys are content now, you could say, Los chicos están contentos ahora. Los chicos están contentos ahora. 
You could also say, Los niños están contentos ahora. Los niños están contentos ahora. How would you say, The girls are happy now. Las chicas están contentas ahora. Las chicas están contentas ahora. You could also say, Las niñas están contentas ahora. Las niñas están contentas ahora. To say you are and are you in Spanish is exactly the same thing. In English, we swap the order of the two words, but in Spanish, we simply shift our intonation to make it clear we are asking a question and not making a statement. Take, for example, necesitas más and necesitas más. I've said the same sentence twice, but the first time I applied a rising inflection, making it clear that I'm asking a question. Ready? I'll go again. Necesitas más? Do you need more? Versus, necesitas más? You need more. Try it yourself. I want you to tell me as a statement that I need more. Necesitas más? Now, I want you to ask me if I need more. Necesitas más? Muy bien. The reason I tell you all this is because there are two words for you are. Eres and estás. Eres is conjugated from the verb ser and estás comes from the verb estar. In Spanish, how would you say hello, how are you? Remember, the word for how is como. Ready? It's, hola, como estas? Hola, como estas? Now, you can say, como eres, but in this context, it would be incorrect. We say, estas, because we want to know how somebody is in this particular moment. If we asked, como eres, we'd be asking that person about their personality or character traits. How are you as a person? Bueno, ahora sí. Quiero relajarme un poco. I want to relax a little bit. I can't stress how lovely this beach is. If you've seen images or pictures of the beaches in Barcelona, it's likely that you've seen this one. I'm currently looking at a unique building shaped like a sail. It's called W Barcelona. It's a sleek skyscraper that stands tall at the beachfront. I believe that it's a luxurious hotel. Have you heard of this building? If you've seen images of the beach in Barcelona, you may have likely seen this building as it's very emblematic. And you know what? Despite being a rather busy city, the Mediterranean water looks very clean and inviting. As I keep saying, me llama mucho la atención. It really calls my attention. Entonces. Oh, you've probably heard me say that a lot. Entonces. It's a really useful word in Spanish that means so, or then, or thus. It's a word that's used a lot, especially in South America. So, entonces. Can you hear that music? You know what time it is. Do you mind if I ask some questions? How would you say, we are going to the beach? Vamos a la playa. Vamos a la playa. How would you say, maritime promenade? Paseo marítimo. Paseo marítimo. How would you say the sand? I'll give you a clue. Think of the famous places where gladiators fought. 
you'd probably find lots of sand in the fighting arena. Arena. La arena. To remember arena, spelt the same as arena, think of a sandy arena where the gladiators fought. Kind of random, but it, but it actually works. Entonces, how would you then say the sand is golden? La arena es dorada. La arena es dorada. Remember, we say la arena es dorada and not está because we are referring to a more permanent characteristic. To refer to permanent characteristics, we use the verb ser. Es is the third person conjugation of that verb. Therefore, how would you say, today the sand is very hot? Hoy la arena está muy caliente. Hoy la arena está muy caliente. We use the verb estar because we are referring to something that is more temporary. The sand is hot today because the sun is out. At 2 a.m. in the morning, I very much doubt it would still be muy caliente. Because we are referring to something temporary, like the temperature of sand, we say está caliente. How would you ask, are you a person? ¿Eres una persona? ¿Eres una persona? We use eres because this is the second person conjugation of ser. You're asking somebody a question about a permanent characteristic, if they are human or not. So we use the verb ser. How would you say, the beach is full now? La playa está llena ahora. La playa está llena ahora. How would you say content? Contento o contenta. Contento o contenta. The two words for I am are soy and estoy. With that being said, how would you say I am a happy person? Soy una persona feliz o soy una persona contenta. Soy una persona feliz o soy una persona contenta. Remember, una persona, that's a feminine noun. So we say una persona contenta. Even if you're a man, una persona will always be a feminine thing. So, all adjectives are modified to agree with the gender. The word for sad is triste. Triste. With that being said, how would you say, Today, I am very sad. Hoy estoy muy triste. Hoy estoy muy triste. Well, there we go. I'm glad we've gone over the difference between ser and estar. Like I say, it's a fundamental concept of in Spanish. Now that you're aware of it, your ears will be on the lookout. Now, I want to enjoy the atmosphere in this awesome beach. Let me enjoy the moment. Déjame disfrutar el momento. Let me enjoy the moment. Déjame disfrutar el momento. Bueno, chicos y chicas, hasta el próximo episodio. Adiós. Chao. Goodbye. I'm excited to introduce the new Immersive Spanish Academy, where I'm taking on a limited number of students 
for one-on-one -on -one online learning sessions with me, Cav. Head over to immersivespanish.net to find out more. If you want to download the transcript of this and every other Immersive Spanish podcast episode, sign up to our Patreon. With our Patreon, you will have access to all of our additional learning resources to fast-track your learning and progress. To find our Patreon, head over to immersivespanish.net. To really consolidate what you've learned, go back and repeat each episode of Immersive Spanish until you can remember all the words we've learned together. I'm thrilled to announce that I've just released another podcast for intermediate learners called Short Stories by Immersive Spanish. Here, we use sound design and music to help tell short, fun stories entirely in Spanish. 